because I'm I. Our lives will come together without a tear or sigh. And though the years roll slowly by, you'll find I'll ever be true. Just because I'm I, sweetheart, about you. Are you? Oh. Oh, that's so. You did say you'd come back today, didn't you? Could you give us a few more days? My husband's out in a wonderful prospect. And besides, one of my relatives is coming here tonight. And I'm certain he'll be able to help us in some way. I'm positive everything will be all right in two or three days. Old man Godski's getting pretty sore at you delinquent tenants. But I'll try and stall him off for a day after tomorrow. But that'll be the limit. If your hubby can't dig up some money by then, well, you'd better have your bags packed when I come back. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Crumb. I'm certain we'll be able to dig up some money by then. Well, goodbye. Was that Hoosus I saw going down the stairs? He gave us till day after tomorrow. How'd you make out? Same old story. A hundred guys and only one job. <laughs> I seem to be getting nowhere fast. John, Uncle Anthony's in town. He called up today and I got the bright idea to ask him here for dinner. There's a chance he might give you a job. Oh, what did you do that for? We can get along without him. Well, a job's a job, no matter where it comes from. Well, we still got two days. I'll figure out something by then. Come on, let's figure out where we're going to get a chicken for dinner. Well, why a chicken? Can't your uncle eat hamburgers as well as I can? He can, but he's not going to tonight. Well, how are we going to get a chicken? The same way we've been getting the hamburger. Now, run along. We have a lot of things left. Well, anything to keep peace in the family. Okay, by me. <laughs> Hello, Schultz, old boy. Hello. How about a chicken on credit until day after tomorrow? Oh, that's what you told me two months ago. Not another bean. Cash on the table. Hey, what's the idea? What am I running? A delicatessen or, or a pawn shop? Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> what you're trying to promote these days, John? Believe it or not, the only thing I'm trying to promote is a job. Well, I'm glad to see you're getting some sense in your head. Just try standing in line for three hours with a hundred other guys, waiting for one measly job. Mm -hmm. What's happened to the old big shot here? Get rich quick Johnny, the oil well promoter. Sounds like he's come down to earth, huh? <laughs> oh, he uh -huh. has. Mm -hmm. He's tried awfully hard, haven't you? Now, that's fine. Can't you do something for him, Uncle? Let me think. You know, I'm no different than anybody else. I've been hit, too, plenty. 
John, I never was strong for outright charity. And I don't think any different today. I don't want any favors, Uncle. All I want is a chance to work. Listen to him, Doc. Eh? <laughs> You've been reading the papers lately? You know, back to the land, all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Sounds like the only answer. Look, here's a letter from the bank about the mortgage on a piece of land I own, a farm, that at present values is worth practically nothing. Bank don't want it, neither do I. Gonna let it go. But it might mean something to you, for a while anyway. Then, of course, there's always the chance you might make the darn thing pay and get the bank to hold on. How's it strike you? Why, Uncle Anthony. That's darn nice of you. You know, I could write a book on what I don't know about farming. But I guess beggars can't be choosers. Would I have an even break to make the thing go? That's up to you. What do you say, Mary? Oh, anything's better than fighting off bill collectors day after day. If it suits you, it's okay by me. Have, have you got a map? Uh, will you write out the directions? How far away is it? When can we go? Well, about 180 miles south of here, there's a town by the name of Arcadia. You drive right down through the main stem. Turn to the left, go maybe six miles. Not bad, huh? A rent collector would have a hard time finding this place. Thank goodness. Look, a windmill. You know what that's for? To tell which way the wind blows. Yeah. No, what are you talking about? I suppose you think that's a mule. Well, he had a mule for a father, didn't he? Or a mother, which is it? Neither. Or both. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> and the house, too. I thought your uncle might have been kidding about the house. <laughs> And, uh, a fireplace. And in a sort of uh, tool shed, there were shovels, hoes, and a couple of old rakes. Then I found another room with all kinds of seeds on the floor. Oh, boy. Tomorrow I start in. This farm is going to grow food like it never has before. Potatoes are ready. Oh, John, the toast. Oh. <clears throat> Bet you never slept on pine boughs before. Uh-uh. <laughs> Tickles. <laughs> I learned how to make them when I was a boy scout. And go and put your blanket down. That's the stuff. Smells good. How do you like my pillow? Oh, that's a humdinger. Put those over you. There you are. Well, good night. Night. John. What? You're so far away. Couldn't you come a little closer? Oh, holy smoke, I'm all tucked in. You know, you know, I'm so afraid of trams.
Juhu. Hey, why don't you put the axe over that hole there and then shove the jack under? Thanks, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's a good yoke, all right. I fixed the tire to go, and I got this much gas only. I'd like to help you out, but I haven't got any gas here. You going far? I was going to California, Penn Gold, maybe. But I don't think I get there now. That's tough, all right. Where'd you start from? I was a farmer in Minnesota, but they take my farm away. Yeah, it's been pretty hard on you guys. Say, I'll bet you know all about farming. I always think so the last couple years. How would you like to come in here and work this place with me? I just got here yesterday myself, and I don't know much about this farming racket. Say, fella, you joking? Honest, no joking. Come on, I'll open the gate. See how she goes? Water makes ground just like chocolate cake. Say, that's wonderful. I'd sure like some sardines tonight for a change. I haven't had any since last night. Oh, hello there. Hello. Hilda, my wife, say maybe you like come eat hot rabbit stew? We'll be right over. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. Say, how's that, huh? Well, the next time you want rabbit stew, you just fix a wire like this and a loop like this, and here comes the rabbit. Clonk, 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 bing, and he's catched. <laughs> <laughs> and if wire don't get him, I stop him so. Wonderful. And those carrots was on the other end of these weeds you cut down yesterday. Oh, John. You mean I cut... Y you yeah, sure? <laughs> 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 well, what do you know about that? Carrots grow on weeds. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was just thinking how much that sweet is done in one day. There must be a lot of fellows in the same boat, just driving someplace until they run out of gas. Look, if one man can do as much as he has in one day, well, why wouldn't ten men do ten times as much? You know, a, a plumber, a carpenter, a stonemason, a sort of cooperative community, where money isn't so important. You help me, I help you. Great idea, huh? If it suits you... It's okay by me.
bring in dozens of them, John. Look. Whoa. <laughs> Come on, Napoleon. Line up, men. What's your trade? Barber. Can't use you. How about you? I'm a cigar salesman. What can you do? High class pants pressing. This is a farm, not a hotel. Plumber. Well, that's something. Carpenter. No kidding. I'm a first violinist. Listen, I'll be back to you guys. Keep your places. It won't do you any good to rush me. Don't you know a trade? Uh, can you fix a machine, uh, till the soil? Uh, can you use your hands? I can use nothing but my hands, but only to make music. Yeah, well, you see, we're building up a... Uh, Please give me a chance. I have strong wrists, strong fingers. I'll learn. Oh, let me stay in work. I'll do anything. Don't go away, partner. Thank you. I'm a stonemason. Okay! Yeah, thank mister, you. Mister, mister, I'll till the soil. I'll sow seed. I'll sow anything. What can you do? What's to be done? Well, did you read the sign? We're looking for men skilled in basic trades like uh, farmers, carpenters, mechanics. Have you got a tractor? Well, you can call it that. I'll drive the tractor. Do you know anything about farming? I said I'd drive the tractor. Mister, listen. Listen, you got to listen to me. I'm going to have a baby any day now. What's that? <laughs> Not me. My wife in the car. Well, why didn't you tell me <laughs> so? Hey, Mary, he's going to have a baby. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm an undertaker. When Captain John Smith and his gang arrived on this continent, what did they do? Stand around and beef about the unemployment situation or value of the dollar? No! They set to work to make their own employment, build their own houses and grow their own food. On the Mayflower, there was a, a planter, a printer, a doctor, a soldier, a bookkeeper, and so on. And that's what we've got here. If they got along without landlords and grocery bills, so can we. What we've got to do is help ourselves by helping others. We've got the land, and we've got the strength. Yeah, and we haven't got any Indians coming around to scalp us either. <laughs> <laughs> now, you don't have to stay. You can go whenever you want to. But if you do stay, make up your minds to work and put this thing over. Folks! I've got two bushels of taters in the back of my flivver. I suggest that we throw everything we have in together into one common pot. Money, food, everything. You can have my three ends and a rooster. I got a $20 gold piece. I got two sacks of flour. I'll throw in my goat. Here's my 560. Host for a dollar $1.80. Marvelous, marvelous. All right, you, uh, a man with the potatoes, uh, what's your name? Hannibal, George Washington Hannibal. All right, Hannibal, you're commissary sergeant. Accepted with pleasure, sir. <laughs> now, uh, who had that $20 gold piece? Here it is. You've got charge of the dough, the uh, finances, if any. Okay. Mr. Chairman and friends, what form of government are we going to have? Well, uh, uh, whatever most of the crowd wants. Then I suggest, my friends, that we bind ourselves together in sacred covenant and establish an immortal democracy. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it was that kind of talk that got us here in the first place. <laughs> no. We must have a socialistic form of government. The government must control everything, including the profits. Wait a minute. Let me talk. I don't even know what those words mean them fellas been talking. All I know is 
We got a big job here, and we need a big boss. And Jan Sims is fella for boss. Yeah. Sims for boss! Hip, hip! Hooray! you mug and I want you to get this. There ain't no place in this camp for your kind of guy. You either play ball or you beat it. We're gonna have law and order here. We're gonna have it if I have to clean up on half the outfit. Wipe your nose and behave. Sunday's paper? Sure would. Ah, baby, don't cry, baby. 
Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Rob. Here, Herbert. Doesn't it? Of course. Didn't you think it would? It makes you feel safe. Confident. Well, like somebody was kind of watching over you. John. There's nothing for people to worry about. Not when they've got the earth. Father, we thank thee for this glorious evidence of thy everlasting care and of thy bounty. Blessed be thy name. Thou hast made the earth fruitful that our labor be productive. We are grateful for this proof of thy watchfulness. It restoreth our hope and faith that with thy help we shall not want for our daily bread. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come quick, Papa. It, it's a boy. <laughs> a boy! It's a boy! <laughs>
isn't that this place? You said it, Louie. Well, don't you folks own this farm? No, Louie, we don't. Take a good look at it, honey. It's probably our last chance. Chris says that the taller the corn gets, the more beautiful it looks. The stalks bend in the wind, he says. They never stop climbing. Yeah. Say, they, they get taller than I am. Clear up there. Oh, John, I don't ever want to leave here. John! John! The sheriff is here! Let's go, honey. I am directed, by order of the Superior Court, to offer at public auction the following piece of property in Center County, the farm known as the Roger S. Wilson Farm, consisting of 160 acres, more or less, in Ottaway Township, together with the farm buildings and equipment complete, to satisfy the judgment of $4,482.17 and costs in favor of the Central City Bank and Trust Company. Bids are now acceptable on this farm. What am I offered? Well, who's going to start the bidding? I'll bid one for... Hey, what's the big idea? You don't want to bid, mister. I said, who's going to start the bidding? Come on, Jen, start off the bidding. I bid a dollar seventy-five. What was that? I said a dollar six bits. What is this, a joke? Why, the mortgage alone is $4,000 and the property is worth four times that much. I bet a dollar eighty-five. This is ridiculous. A dollar eighty-five bid for this valuable farm property. This sale can't go on. Come on. You know the law, Sheriff. Received two bids, property must be sold. Who told you that? State law. Article 46, Section 3. Look it up. Pretty smart, ain't you? All right. I'm bid a dollar eighty-five for this fine farm. Do I hear any other bid? The ridiculous low price of a dollar eighty-five bid for this wonderful farm. Come on, folks, bid. I gotta get more money than that. For this wonderful place? We decided that since you started this thing and been bossing it, we wanted to give the farm to you. That's yeah, right, boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't right. given up, men, and I don't know how to thank you. But uh, where'd you get the idea, anyway? Oh, oh, tell us. Oh, Down in Iowa, they sold a farm for 95 cents. We hated to have to pay a dollar eighty-five. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a great gang, and if we all stick together, we can put this thing over. Now, uh, what about food until the uh, crops come through? We can oh, get the ranch right. Give me three men in the truck, and I'll go up on Table Mountain and bring back a whole load of apples. There's a hey, farmer hey, down the road who raises hogs. Maybe he'll give us some, and we'll pay him back after the harvest. Hey, we'll bring home the bacon. Say, that's yeah. well. See, if my wife's uh, rabbits keeps on multiplying, that'll help. Say, that's, that's fine. fine. Now we'll start the first thing in the morning. <laughs> come in. I saw the light burning. I hope you don't mind. Why, not at all. Say, what is this, a gangster's hangout or something? <laughs> <laughs> Why, no, uh, we all work here. We're farmers. <laughs> Say, where is this place? I've been driving around that darn rain for about five hours. I must have taken the wrong road someplace. My old man got tanked up in the last town we came through. He, he did? He passed out in the back of the car. Probably drowned by now. Is that your car? Yeah. Say, would some of you fellas be good enough to bring him up here so he can catch his breath? Sure. Hey, come on, a couple of you big guys. Okay. Uh, Louie. Sure. Certainly. Where's Louie? The 
I just want to get a drink. Oh. Come on. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, my wife makes more wonderful preserves, and we'll get plenty oh, to eat. Yeah. I got the eyes. Well, it's still raining. Well, well it's great for the corn. You, uh, you go over there and dry yourself out. <laughs> You better get the dark pipe. This old guy was drunk, but he's dead now. Dead? Are you sure? Well, I guess I know a stiff when I see one, don't I? Hey, pipes! Wait a minute. Better get the undertaker instead. The undertaker? Holy mackerel! Hey, Spike, give me a hand with this thing. We'll take it over to the barn. Okay. You're being awfully brave about this. Pop's not doing so bad out there. He always wanted to live on a hill. for me to stay here like you said it was last night. I'll, I'll go ahead and unpack the laundry. Maybe you ought to go in with her. I think she'd rather be alone. There was almost another funeral here yesterday. Louie caught Jake Wilder sneaking off the place with some community goods. He did. Yeah. Can you imagine the nerve of that guy? He was going to sell the stuff outside. Said his wife wanted a radio. Huh. <laughs> We'd last about a week here at that rate. What did you do? Well, I warned him. But the next one that pulls anything like that gets out of here. Believe me. I have kitchen duty today. All right. You won't be lonesome. No, no second helpings today. Listen, Chef, I'm not on a diet. You will be if they don't bring me something to cook. Is that the biggest handout we get? Pipe down. I do that. Thanks. How is she? Come on, I'm hungry. Well, move over. Sour puss. Nice joint they got here. Yeah. Beautiful view. Great idea, this village. Swell chance for advancement. I'm going to open up a beauty parlor. Got a special invite from the head man. Hey, what's eating? Your cat got your tongue? I don't know how long you're going to be here or why. That guy's married and you lay off. My gosh, ain't you anticipatory. Mm. 
One half bin of potatoes. Half a bin of potatoes. About a dozen onions. A dozen onions. Three quarters of a sack of beans. Gee, I get a kick out of this. A bushel of apples. Those men better show up for some fruit today. I always got more pep when I'm doing something. Come in. Hello. Hello, Louie. Uh, three cans of tomatoes. Three cans of tomatoes. How's it coming? Not so hot. We're hoping. Twelve pounds of sugar. Why? You got any ideas? No, not especially. I just wonder. Well, don't come around here making it any worse with that long face of yours. Or Sally. I guess what you need some dough. Yeah, wouldn't hurt. Six summer squashes. Two sacks of cornmeal. There's a swell guy. Oh, I don't like him. Give me the willies. That's enough. Hey, I, I want to know something, Chris. Sure, what? What's the lowdown on this food situation? Well, it don't look good, and that's the truth. No chance of getting any anyways? The men been out every day after rabbits and deer. You know as well as I do there's no more rabbits, and there ain't a deer in the county by this time. That's right, I guess. Hey. Take a look at this. You'll probably guess something like that about me. Yeah. But what's this got to do with our food? The $500 has got a lot to do with it. How? You and me are going to take a trip into town. You're coming back with $500 without me. You get the reward for the camp, see? What do you think I am? The camp's got to have food. There ain't a man in camp wouldn't rather starve than eat that way. Well, they'll get me anyway, sooner or later. I've forgotten I ever see that paper. And that's the truth. Well, the corn baby has colic. See you later. Okay. Right. Rather be hit over the head than frightened to death. Your car running all right? I suppose so. Why? You and me are driving into town. What are we going to do? Get married? No. You're going to tell the sheriff that your name's Mrs. John Sims. The sheriff said, what is this? I'll tell you later. Go get your car. Sally, this place has about got me down. I don't talk like that, honey. Come on, let you and me take a walk. That old moon will make you forget you ever had a worry. Won't you? Come on. Blair must feel romantic tonight. I always feel like I'm wasting something when there's a moon like that. Nothing's happening. That's funny. 
I've often felt that way, too. You know, you've been nice to me since I've been here. Oh. Yeah. You seem so different. You're not fresh at all. I think you're swell. I'm no different from anybody else. I think you are. I think you're a great guy. Yeah. That's what I used to think, too. But you can't buy food for a lot of hungry people just by being a great guy. It takes dough for that. You want this place to succeed more than anything else in the world, don't you? What do you think? Would you be awfully happy if you got a lot of money tonight? <sighs> What's the gag? No gag. Five hundred. Where'd this come from? Can you imagine doing this for us? Five hundred bucks. Will Mary be surprised? Come on! You know, we ought to take a picture of this and send it to Louis. Not a bad idea. To Oregon with my banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I'm a. Uh, you been cotton weeds again, Jan? You go yump in the lake. <laughs> the corn looks great. Yeah. She's nice and green, and she waves her arms to the sun. <laughs> but she's thirsty, Jan. Very thirsty. She wants a good drink of water. Just one more rain. I'll bet you my hat against yours arranged before the end of the week. I hope you're right, boss. Say, what do you hear from Louis? Our lawyer from the camp told the judge why Louis had given himself up, and the judge promised to go as easy as possible. Oh, then everything's all right, hmm? Sure, fine. Oh, I'm going back to Oregon with my banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I'm going back to Oregon with my banjo on my knee. What do you say? Well, if this sun keeps up three, four days, that's all. Look, that corn is dying. I don't know what we're going to do. Isn't there enough water in the well to do some good? No. But couldn't the men carry it from outside somewhere? The power company reservoir, how far is that? Three, four miles. We couldn't carry enough in buckets or tanks to do any good. But we have such a lot of people here, and a lot of cars. The people are discouraged. Well, the money is just about all gone, and if we don't get rain, we won't have no crops. I heard some of the men say they were getting ready to leave.
job. Come here. Sit down. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. There must be something. You're upset. You're not yourself. I tell you, nothing's the matter. John, we've worked, we've starved, we've licked everything together so far. You never held out on me before. What is it, John? Well, what do those guys expect me to do? Climb up and poke my fist through a rain cloud? They look up to you, John. They look up to you for guidance and help. They, they want to believe in you. They pick you as their leader. Well, who asked them to pick me? I can make mistakes too, can't I? I'm only human. Can I help it if it, if it don't rain? No one expects you to. But keep your perspective. Be the boss again. Let them think you're not worried. Let them think you know more than they do. Oh, this cheap joint gives me a pain. There's no future here. No place for a guy with big time ideas. Oh, what's the use? I, I've got ideas bigger than this place. Real big stuff. John, this isn't you talking. Somebody else. Some <laughs> stranger. It's me, all right. I'm finally getting wise to myself, that's all. I'm fed up. I'm sick of the whole place. I'm through with it all. I quit. <laughs> far this thing's gone between you and John. But I do know he hasn't been the same since you came here. And I'm asking you to let him alone. Well, don't blame me. Can I help it if he likes me? For the first time in his life, John's been making good. And, and if you keep this up, you're going to ruin him. You're going to ruin the chances of happiness of all these people. Happiness? Don't make me laugh. Why, this dump will never amount to anything. And as for John, I mean more to him than you and that whole Boy Scout camp put together. Pally, I told you once you could stay here as long as you want to. Now I tell you to get out. Oh, so you're the boss now, huh? You know you don't belong in a place like this. Get out. All right. I'll go. You will? Will you, Sally? Sure. Sure, I'll go. Oh. Thanks. It's all right. But John's going with me. John wouldn't go with you. No? John wouldn't go anywhere with you. <laughs> I'm not afraid of that. Can I get you anything? No, it's... it's all right. Oh. 
always doing something, aren't you? Knitting and things like that. You run through a lot of socks, you know. Yeah, I, I guess I do. You see, I take a lot of looking after. You must get pretty tired of it sometimes. It's my job. John. What? Where are you going? Oh, I don't know. You're going down to see the men? Well, what's the use? Everything's going all right. You know, you know this camp would certainly be lost without you, John. Yeah. Well, uh, see you later. John, remember the day the sprouts came up? Sure. Sure, I remember. Why? Wasn't it wonderful? Remember how you felt? Yeah. It was nice. Listen to that. The old powerhouse is working again. You know what that means? I'll bite what? It means the water's running downstream not two miles from the camp. So what? Well, Chris said irrigation would save the crops. Oh, come on, honey. Let's get going. It's getting late. Chris said if we could get water in four or five days... Forget it, baby. Don't think back. Think ahead. You and me. You're going places. Well, I'll bet in four days we could dig a ditch to carry that water oh, to the corn. Oh, you're too big a guy to be digging ditches. You belong with somebody that appreciates you. You belong with me. I'm going back. If you go back, we're through. You'll never see me again. Johnny! Ah. is working again. There's water in that stream not two miles from here. What we ought to do is get that water down here to our crops. We've got five days to do it in, and I've got an idea of how it ought to be done. It'll mean work. Work without stopping. Yeah, and what'll you be doing? Uh, <laughs> I'll be working right along with you. Now, you're going to follow me or quit like yellow dogs? Yeah, you're a fine one to be talking like that. Yeah, you're the guy we have to thank for being in this spot. spot. Forget what you think of me. Think of yourselves. Think of your homes, your wives, your kids. Think of everything you've worked so hard for. Think of losing it because you wouldn't take another chance. Chris, you said irrigation would save the crops. By working day and night, we might be able to dig a ditch and bring that water down here. That'll save our crops, won't it? Men, 
It means everything in the world to you. Come on, let's try it. Chris, how about you? Hey, go get my shovel, Jan. Think it'll work, Chris? Go get your shovel. Okay. If you go rocks, I'm going to. All right. Yes, and I'm going to. Yeah, and take me with you. And me too. We're not licked. We're going to win. Had a boy, John. I'm with you, John. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. Come on, heavy wing. Come on, fellas. Come on, heavy wing. All right, men. Fix on the conversation. We're about to commence. About a foot and a half by two? Yeah, I've got about four feet in the stream. We go ahead and mark the way. All right, the fix first, then the shovel. Come on, let's bear down on it. Go straight through the brush. Look out, I'm swinging up high and hard. Swing it out there. I'm next. Keep. Hit the one. Put it in All right, boys. Right through here. We can bring it straight across. Rock, put one stake there and one out here. A foot and a half by. Get this one out of the way. Look out, that's my shoe. Clear it out. Swing now. Let's get going. Keep it up. Bear down, Ellie. Bear down. Keep moving, Scotty. Why don't you do it back in here, sir? Sink them, brother. Sink those. Oh, watch oh. my pick. I'll watch yours. I don't want to clip your ear off. That's right. Come on, no feet. Full shower. Nimble pull. Don't count. Watch your hurry. We got a long way to go. Yeah, we'll All right, come on. Come here, you fellas. Give us a hand here. Uh, well, hurry up. Too. Well, now look, we could go right through here. All right, you take this tree. We'll go ahead. Next one's mine. Get that tall tree out of the way. I want right in the back there. Both of those. I'm sorry. Get a rope above them. Heads up. since 6 o'clock this morning. More coffee? No, thanks. I better get back to work. Go on. Coffee? Good. Thanks. Thanks. Here you are. Thanks. What are you waiting for? Those diggers will be on our necks. Pull that log down to Chris. Give him 
What you need is a drink. <laughs> 